Y'all, let me tell you something. I have a treat for you today. The guest that I have, we have been trying for weeks <laughs> to get this interview done. So you know it's going to be good because you know the enemy likes to fight. Mm -hmm. So I am so excited to have Kim here, Kimberly. I'm so excited to have her here. We're going to be talking to you all and you want to listen. So Kim, please tell my guests all about you. Tell us something about yourself. Okay, well, I am a mother of four adult children and one minor, uh, so I am looking forward to celebrating my 50th birthday oh, <laughs> next yeah. year. Yes, I am so looking forward. The 40s have been just one of the best seasons in my life, so, and um, I am an inspirational speaker. I love, um, I'm very passionate about inspiring women and men. And I just, I'm just loving the journey. I'm loving the journey that God has, has me on right now. Yeah. This path. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I am so happy and I'm so glad to have you. So welcome. Thank so, you. Thank you for having me. Now, this is one of the things that I love about my podcast because I never know which way it's going to go. Mm -hmm. So um, when Kim, is it, if I, is it all right yes, if I call you Kim? Fine. Cause I'm just, uh -huh, okay. Uh -huh. Um, we decide, uh, we talk about, we have a meet and greet and her and I, we talked and everything. And so um, she chose a story. Actually, she chose a video <laughs> to talk about. So which video did you see that you wanted to talk about? It was about the, um, the trauma, I believe, and, and um, about how we Losing um, our voice. Yeah, the voice um and in that mm -hmm. aspect, losing it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Um, the the one that I think you're talking about is an interview that I did with Katrina. Yes. A friend mm -hmm. of my Katrina Garrett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Katrina chose the story finding the rest of your voice. Mm -hmm. And her and I did the interview. And so when Kim told me she wanted to talk about that. I was like, this is great. It's a different twist mm -hmm. because she enjoyed the actual video that we did, the interview that we did. Yeah. And the interview has just talked about me and Katrina. We're talking about um, getting our full voices back, how we lost mm -hmm. it. And um, Katrina lost hers by way of, um, she, she said that she lost her voice by fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. She was afraid that she would be rejected if she spoke up. And that's mm -hmm. how she lost her voice. And her, her and I did the interview about, you know, getting, you know, our voices back, our full voices mm -hmm. and using them for God. So when you heard the video, when you looked at the interview, what did you think? I loved it. But I also, you know, about the memoir and right then it just, it just, hit my spirit about the um silent cry that I remember my own self you know living in so yeah yeah so I believe in stories I believe stories are what connect us and so we all have a story of something that happened to us so was there a story that happened or something that happened to you in your life where you felt like you just lost a part of your voice yeah well the um abandonment and the um uh, being separated from my mother and father, um, both of them at a, at a very young age, I actually stayed with both of them and my sister, which was two years older than me up until I was about five and that, um, abandonment and rejection and them never coming back to, um, reunite me with them, you know, uh, shut me down where I, I, I felt what, in the world could I possibly say to anyone that would hear me you know mm. it wasn't talked about it wasn't um uh, you know I was just pretty much dropped off to my um paternal aunt which was my dad's oldest sister and I knew that was family but I never never stayed with her I didn't know that this was going to be a permanent place and um I felt Right. Even at that young age, I, I, fe I felt that I built this wall of justice mm. and that it was no reason for me to fight or, or, or say anything because my justice was pretty much broken from the very beginning. 
what did it matter? You, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, um, I found shutting down and shutting my voice down that mm-hmm. I started seeking relationships that would, I was actually looking at them to fight for me. Wow. To, yeah. To be my voice. And if they couldn't, and if, if they failed me and disappointed me, it would put me in a spiral. Wow. It would put me in a mental spiral. Like how you can't fight for me. You're not, you know, I'm not, you know, it, cause I was seeking it somewhere else. I wasn't healed and got God to really give me that uh, confidence and the ability that I could. Wow. I could say how I felt. I could, you know, I could make, take a stand and say, no, that's not true. Or no, that really hurt my feelings or no. Um, why would you say that? Or that's not what had happened. Even that, even that small. Wow. I did. I, I felt I couldn't say I, I needed someone else to say for me. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. Um, yeah. this is the first, um, and I've <laughs> talked about losing my voice and I've had, um, I think I've had two people that come on and talk about it. One gentleman, he lost his, um, he lost his through stress whenever mm-hmm. he got stress or anxiety, mm-hmm. um, his vocal cords were shut down. Mm-hmm. And then I had, um, another um, guest to come on and she talked about losing her voice in her marriage, mm-hmm. but I've never had anyone to come on and say, you know, I, I needed someone else to fight for me because even though yeah. in all our um, circumstances, we all kind of lost our voice, but we, we didn't lose it completely. And it mm-hmm. sounds like you lost yours completely because you wanted someone else to speak up for you. Yeah. So how was that growing up? You know, it was, was it- very, it was very hard and God allowed different angels and, and, and different aspects of my life to give me that what I yearned for, mm-hmm. like my uh, special educational teacher at that time, it was called resource because I already told my age and um, she didn't look like me. She was Caucasian, but she took a stand. And um, even though it was um, pretty much PTSD, if the testings was like they are now, the tools and stuff, but they had diagnosed me with mild retardation. So I stayed with her for six years wow. because I I couldn't, my, my memory, like the traumatic experience of being dropped off and then seeing such one of the worst physical altercations that my dad and my mother had hours before I was dropped off. It just, it just put my mind into another, it just took it in another uh, area (laughs) and I couldn't retain, I couldn't retain information. And so she was, was pretty much besides my adopted dad showed me that uh, she, she would fight for me. She, she said, I'll never forget because I stayed with her for six years, like the fourth or fifth grade when I could understand. She said, you're a special child. I'm not going to let you go. Oh, yeah, you're a special child. So and I remember being bullied and I never went to my mother and father because Mm -hmm. here my voice, but because she gave me that comfortability, I went to her and I didn't say um, immediately they're picking with me because of my voice was so shocked. I, I remember specifically saying to her, I don't want to go to recess. She had to pull it out. Of yeah. me, it's me. She had yeah. to pull it out of me. Why? And um, she said, you know, she asked me. She was like, "Why? Why don't you want to go to recess?" You know. And I said, "Um, they call me names. Mm. They know that I go with you every day, and they they call me names. They call me little retarded girl, and you know, they pick oh, on wow. me. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Doesn't do no bullies, <laughs> no bad. No, no, I know. I'm sitting here um, listening to you, yeah. and I had I had the same experience. Go ahead, I I I know yeah. exactly how yeah. you felt and what uh-huh. you went through. Mm-hmm. But ahead. but she gave me that comfortability, like I said, it would never and it and I didn't. I never told my adopted parents. That's the thing, oh. but I told her, and well, it was the way that I told her. But she got she gave me that comfort that uh. First, I had to see her fighting for me because I was struck. Mm -hmm. I was so downtrodden immediately in my mind that these two people that I loved, that I knew, that I knew that was supposed to be, you know, my mother and father and keep me, 
no matter what or come back and get me failed me yeah failed me and there was no law there was no 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 nobody standing up and saying you know explain to her what why yeah you know or you know yeah and ask her how she felt or you know is there anything that we can do to make the transition better you know yeah yeah wow that that's amazing (laughs) now for me I the difference in you and I, my mom, she pulled it out of me. I mm-hmm. mean, when I was getting bu- bullied, I was getting physically bullied where mm-hmm. I was being rammed into the wall This, this mm-hmm. and I was in high school mm-hmm. and my mom pulled it out of me. I didn't like you were saying you didn't go to her and you didn't, you didn't mm-hmm. tell, you know, the lady, I, my mom, she kept noticing something and then she, mm-hmm. you know, how some mamas are, if you right. don't tell what's going on, yeah. I'm gonna light you up, you know, right, because right, she knew. Right, right. and then I told her, and she protected me. And I think that's, you know, that's amazing how you didn't have someone to protect you. So as you became an adult, when did you get to the point in your life where you said, you know, I can't continue to live like this because there was a point in my life where I got mm-hmm. there and I was like, mm-hmm. I can't live like this anymore. Um, Lord, <laughs> years of toxic relationship years mm. of physical abuse and mentally abusive relationships yeah a, re- a repeated c- uh, cycle that um finally came to a head and I finished the memoir and this last relationship was which was wasn't one of my marriages but was uh mental you know, and, um, here I got back into this relationship, just like I had always the rest of them giving, giving, giving my all and, um, uh, really, um, losing myself. It didn't matter as long as the other person was okay. Long as I could save, long as I could help, long as I could see his progress and whatever, but I, whatever came from me would come. It wasn't important, you know? And uh, so it came to a head where um, I finally got into a real intimate relationship where I gave all my areas to God. And I said, it has to stop. And Mm -hmm. God, it has to stop with me. I've been trying to let it stop or have things change by the other person and not giving me totally to you, my creator, and helping me to change and accept. And that's where the accept and embrace came from. Accept foundations were broken. Yeah. Foundations were broken from the intimacy, from sexuality, from uh, um, from from love. I didn't know what love looked like because here again, from the from the past, um, and then you know, um, the uh, going into um, being raised in an extended family that the the love was confusing. Yeah. You know, the love was confusing from this, this, the actions and the, and the, and the signs. So I had to really get to a rock bottom. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that, that was one of the worst, the last relationship and it wasn't a marriage was one of the worst ones that I knew that I hit rock bottom and I said, it has to stop yeah, and it has to begin with me. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly how you feel because I got to that point. Um, I became a Christian mm-hmm. and me becoming a Christian. I was like, Lord, I can't live like this. I can't right. keep right. going around, right. not talking with my head down, allowing right. people to be abusive towards me. Right. And, you know, one of the things that um, I share is that when I prayed and I asked God to give my voice back, I got my voice back in a different way. Mm -hmm. I went from not talking at all to (laughs) cussing people out. 
because of all the yeah. hurt, you know, yeah. because we, yeah. that's what you yeah. feel for so long yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what you encounter. That's what you right. become. So I had to ask the Lord again. I was like, all right, Lord, mm -hmm. I'm cussing people out. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm back. Being a bully. I, right. I'm, I'm back. Like, yes. I need you to help me to tweet be a happy this. medium. Exactly. Yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> tweet this. Uh -huh. So when, when you went to God and you prayed and you asked the Lord to help you to find yourself to give you your voice back. What happened to you? Did you do, were you like me? Did you go to that end? To I, that I was spectrum? vocal. I was vocal. Now I, I can, I, I said choice words that it really amazed me. My kids said I was funny at, and, and you know, <laughs> funny as I, as I, I do it, but, but, um, uh, I, um, it, it more freed me. Mm -hmm. I found a liberation. Yeah. Through the courage of uh, um, publishing, um, you know, my memoir, my story, and not being shameful, not feeling guilty. That's that good. was like the first part of my freedom, of my liberation, of my voice through my book. Mm -hmm. And then he just, you know, just started elevating it more and more. And as I started... Um, uh, giving myself having that the best gift that I could give myself is choosing me yes it started just just it just was a just a whole new world it was just life-changing yeah it was just life-changing and when I what miss me when I when I speak I tell and I and I'm very confident I live this like you were talking about when the I I just don't talk this I live it. And do, do I still go through challenges? Yes, ma'am, yes. I do. But I live this walk. When I say I have a personal relationship and I choose me daily, it doesn't look like a traditional, but I talk to God every day and I mm -hmm. lean and trust him every day, you know, for wisdom, for knowledge, for protection, for peace, peace that the world can't give and the world can't take. I know peace right. to peace to peace to that I fought so hard to have and also that connection and that relationship that I talked to God and I say you know constantly peace that I I I fought so hard to have and that I fight to keep any time that it's a disruption in my spirit mm -hmm. that I know that isn't right I make sure that I do what I have to do to disconnect do you yeah. get what I'm saying when before no, my spirit it was so immune to that, that I kept it coming. I felt like I could save that. I, I felt like it was giving me my all. It would turn into peace, you know, yeah. the, the, the eruption and the chaos. That was how my mentality was and how I was thinking until, you know, um, I, I just constantly like I said build every day and mm -hmm. uh, it gets stronger it gets stronger yeah. and I tell people it's not traditional it's not prostrate it's not um you know sometimes I I, I have to work on fasting but it's not um you know it's my own personal relationship I'm a music lover yeah. so I listen to all types of music but I also feed my spirit in my 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 very best art uh gospel artist which is like Tamala Man. I have her yeah. uh, five or six songs and on uh, random in my I uh, that Kirk Franklin, you know, but I also listen to all me because that is my coping mechanism yes. that I found that copes that that, that helps me. Yeah. 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 But that's your journey. So you have exactly. to choose you have yes. to choose what works for you. Right. And, right. and anyone out there, because your journey is different than someone right. else. For me, I have to constantly tell myself stuff. And the other night, it's something you just said I thought about. It's so funny because the other night, you know, I was having a really difficult time sleeping and the enemy comes at me when I'm sleep, when I'm, you know, trying to rest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was binding and just, you know, fighting it. And the next morning when I was doing my prayer time and, you know, my meditation and all of that, I asked God about it. And he said, you know, it's a, you have to fight to keep mm -hmm. your peace. Mm -hmm. You have to fight to keep your joy. You have to right. fight to keep your voice. It's an everyday one day at a time. So right. with you going through all of this, let's say you met someone and you saw yourself in them. And they were still where you were, not where you are today. 
What would you say to that person? If you, I mean, you just looked at, you was like, oh my God, this is me when I was her age. Mm -hmm. What would you say to her to help that person to get where you are? Uh, well, first of all, I would um, ask him if they felt that they had the ability that they could okay. choose. Yeah. Because I know, I know far as me, that was one of the most powerful things is when someone are, I believed within that I had the ability that I could choose. Okay. And it was very empowering. So, you know, I would first, you know, really ask them, did they think or did, could they, you know, did they really believe that they had the ability because they do have the ability to choose. And if any time in their life of at first accepting that they have the ability to choose, that's the one of the first steps that I know that is so empowering and that give yourself, no matter how mm. old you are, give yourself that choice to choose you yes finally let not not your kids because I remember being in an abusive relationship because I chose them I did not want them to see them in a separate you know household with with the thought but I've, I chose them because I was like no matter how I'm being hit or or being treated as long as they're with the two parents and they see them and their security, and they can go to bed. Yeah, it's going to be all right. But when I got that clear manifestation that that was not my life, that my life had to be be built on choosing me yes. and choosing what I could live with, and yeah. what not only that of how God expect it my life to be like. Yeah. He created me for love and to be loved. Mm -hmm. Not to be abusive, not to be abused or abusive to, you know, because I remember that one of the uh, last relationships that started, I started counter, counter, counteracting on the things that he was doing to me out of protection, like trying to defend myself. And it was, it was like you were saying, like, I was um, like fighting for my voice. He said, yeah. F you. And then I would be like, F you too. But that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. I was trying to fight. You know, it's just like, look, if you got to create a monster, then you then you you really starting to do it. Yeah. So I had to, you know, see, and like you were saying to another person, if you find the guideline of choosing you and what God has created our life to be like, you wouldn't make a mistake. Yeah. By doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think it's so key that you have to choose you. You yes, have you to do. put yourself first. And I yes. think one of the key issues is self-love. Yes, you have self -love. to love yourself. You yes. have to love yourself yeah. and all the negative parts of you, you know, even the parts of your body that you don't yes. like, or yes. if you don't like your voice or whatever you don't, you have to learn yes. how to embrace it and love it. Love Flaws it. Flaws and all. Yeah. Everything. And I know I came from a generational era. My mom, you know, she didn't intentionally, but my adopted mom, I come from a generational era. She, I, I'll never forget. And it, I thank God that my uh, adopted dad was, he was always the bridge. So he never, I couldn't put them against each other, but he would always be pray, pray, praying to God for wisdom and knowledge. And he would see uh, and he would feel a discernment, but she used to say, you know, she would, they were very light in color. So she would say, baby, you don't look like us. You know, you got a nigger nose, you got thick lips. But, and you know, at 10, 11, yeah, it's at 10, yeah. 11, you know, at 10, 11, I'm like, oh my God. So I started hating some of the features on my, especially, you know, my nose and mouth. And this, this wise man, he only had a third grade education. Thank God, bless his heart. Both of them has passed away now. But um, he's seen my demeanor go mm -hmm. down. And as mm -hmm. you were talking about loving yourself, and he said to me, he never corrected my mother. And she didn't intentionally said that to hurt me. It was just their generation. Yeah. Just, they, they spoke their mind regardless my, yes. of what they, what they, <laughs> what they meant. <laughs> and, uh, and so he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, Kimmy, he said, I want to tell you something. He said, I've been noticing you are not, um, you, you're, you're not, you're not 
I think he said something about I'm not doing, I'm not looking right or something like that. But he said, I want you to do this. He said, you smile. The world needs your smile. And when he did that, yeah, when he said that, it just invested that, 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 that what she had, what was in my mind that she had planted, you know, that made me start hating those features. He invested, he turned it around. And I tell you, when I had to really start, you know, choosing me, one of the things like you were saying that self-love and loving me started coming more and more and profound where I was like, I know that I got that smile. And um, I, I, I smile all the time through hurt, through pain. I, I just, I just smile. But um, I said, I have to learn to love all of me as well. Oh, all of my features, yeah. all of my flaws, all of the negative things that had was, was pointed out about me. Mm-hmm. But I know that God created me in such a beautiful, that's yes. what I grasped. He yes. created everything beautiful. And wonderfully, especially his human beings. Mm -hmm. And I take that word literally. I said, but I'm beautifully and wonderfully made Made. in his image. And I'm created, like I said, to be loved and loved. And I'm created for an abundance life. I'm created. I just give all that word back to him to know and to um, um, validate within, not from someone else, how I want my life to be. And yeah. it's a choice that I can do. And I have the ability to choose it. I know that's right. You got a peace, girl. I know that's right. And, you know, as I'm listening to you talking, I think about, for me, being fluffy. I call it, I like fluffy. fluffy Growing yes. up being fluffy, you know, and my father would make comments. And I never thought a man would want anyone that was fluffy mm-hmm. because of the comments that my dad made. And I remember my auntie one time, I I used to go and visit, I had an aunt that was blind and I used to visit her all the time. Mm -hmm. And I used to take her shopping and we would do things. And one time we came back, I had taken her to church and we had come back and we were sitting there. She said, I want to talk to you. And I was like, what? And she said, um, she said, do you know, all day today, everyone was commenting you and talking about how pretty you were and, Mm -hmm. and all that. And every time someone gave you a compliment, you said something negative about yourself. And I wrote a story about this. One of my, I wrote a story about this um, in my podcast. Um, because, and it's, I think the name of it is called Just Say Thank You. Mm-hmm. And my auntie, she said, every time, I want you to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Every time someone says something to you, you pull out something negative about yourself. Mm-hmm. You need to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, I was talking to my best friend on the phone and she was doing that. And Mm -hmm. she said, you know what? I am just so sick of it. She said, listen, I don't care. You stop doing that. Whatever, when anyone gives you a compliment, just say thank you. Whether you believe it, it. whether you believe it or (laughs) not. Right. And I mean, I was like, wow, two people within a short period of time, you know, that mean a lot to me in a short Uh period of time, say Mm -hmm. the very same thing. So, Mm -hmm. you know, when I got my voice back, I had to go through, you know, self love. I had to start loving. This is, I might be fluffy, but I am a beautiful, fluffy woman, whether you like it or not. You know, I have to tell myself those things. So I have um, a couple of questions at the end of my video. Mm-hmm. I mean, not my video. I'm sorry. At the end of my episodes on my show, when I share my story, I always ask personal, I ask two questions. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to ask those questions. Okay. So the first one, it says, if you have regained your voice, which you have, mm-hmm. are there people who you still don't speak up to? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. One. Yeah. And you be know honest. what? Yeah. And, and, yeah, and it's nothing wrong with and that. Because... And, 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 and I, you know, I'm very transparent and I would, you know, I'll share um, my biological mother. She's the only one living. And I, I felt uh, I don't want to disrespect her. And I really feel that that would be one right now I wouldn't speak up to because all the words has been said, said. Yeah. I, it wouldn't do any type of benefit for me. Yeah. yeah, but as long as you have a peace yeah. with it and yeah. you come to yeah. that peace, yeah. then it's fine. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, 
maybe one and I'll, okay, I'll say it. I'm going to answer the question. I'll say it this way. <laughs> if it's someone out there that I wouldn't speak up at the moment, mm -hmm. there are times when I don't speak in the moment. I have to mm -hmm. go pull my crazy right. stuff together, pray, mm -hmm. get my mm -hmm. voice the right tone and come back and then say it. <laughs> right. So it's kind of like, I'll say it's, there are people that I delay. Yeah. Okay, so the last, the the um second question is, how important is it to you to have your full voice without holding it back words to save someone else's feelings? Oh, my, it's life changing. It's one. It's 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 just life changing Isn't um, it? for me. Yeah. And um, I I I got to say, it's uh, for as me the freedom. Mm -hmm. I, I've been freed, and that's just how I feel. Yeah. I know that's right. Cause there's no <laughs> going back. Once you get your mm -hmm. voice, it is yeah. no yeah. going back. And I think we do ourselves a disservice when mm -hmm. we don't use our full voice. Mm -hmm. And we also give the other person yes. a part of us when we don't. So right. it's so important right. that we do use our full voice right. with everyone. Right. right. So, oh right. my God, Kim, right. this was so good. <laughs> Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. You have a See? book. So yes. I want you to tell us about that and give us your social media website, all the stuff so that if someone wants to read your book and purchase okay. your book, they can. So just tell us about it. Okay. So it's, it's the uh, memoir, uh, my uh, life from the beginning to about probably last year or so. Uh, it's uh, called The Epitome of Kimmy. Okay. And um, it's uh, uh, very transparent. It's uh, pretty much uh, about my foundations, all my marriages are in there, all the birth of my children. And it is a um, um, true, genuine uh, heart, you know, truth of to aspire people that um, if there was ever a time of you wanting to give up, give in, or, uh, you know, let it all go, then this is a must read book because, uh, yeah, um, the chapters will, will, will testify everything that um pretty much of holding on is so much worth it it's so much worth to see uh god taking you through all the things and i subtitled um accept and embrace it all and so that every foundation everything that i had to go through from the beginning the epitome of kimmy i had to accept and then i could embrace it all that uh the foundations doesn't have to be cut, continue to be left broken. Mm -hmm. I'm now can with through God's help build what he has created for not only me, for all of us to have in life. Yeah. Well, we are so glad that Kimmy <laughs> has gotten her voice back and that yes. Kimmy has written yes. this book to encourage yeah. and to help yes. others. Yes. Yeah. So where, where can we find the book? It's on Goodreads and on Amazon. And uh, my website is uh, www. Uh, it's Kimberly Ann with the e-bell, all one word. And you'll get to see my family. I forgot to say I got six wonderful grandchildren so I call my four I call my 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 children my heartbeats and my grandchildren the strings on strings to my heart because they ain't <laughs> not like a grandma boy, I tell you oh, that's I don't right know. but yeah. um so you know my family's there um uh, my tribute to my adopted mother like it is I just love to if I could just get you know a smile through you know my journey if not, nothing else and that uh God is just good, not just to me, but for all that uh, we are able to share our journeys, speak our truth, inspire one another. And um, as I found, break generational curses is is, 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 yes. yeah, is, is what it's all about. Yeah. That is so key. Yeah. Well, I will make sure that I have all the information in the description. So, yes. you know, when they're looking at it, they can just tab down and they can find you yeah. um, the book and you know, look at I your appreciate it. I, but I am so glad that <laughs> God has moved to your life like he did mine. And yes. like I said, we have similar journeys, but I, I, I just thank God for loving us enough to know what mm. we need Yes, and to hear us when we prayed and we cried to yeah. get it. And he said, okay, right. I got you. Yes. I got you. Yes. And now, and then isn't it amazing how God said, okay, these people who didn't talk, 
who <laughs> didn't love each other. Now God's like, now I want to use you. you. Yes, yes. <laughs> to help other right, people. Right. So I'm like, God, talk. I'm yeah. like, God, you have a sense of humor. Yes, I do. <laughs> but uh, God is like, you've been through it. So yeah, you know how yeah. they feel and you're yeah. the perfect person to help someone. And I know yeah. that you are helping someone today by being here. So thank uh, well, you. Well, thank so you much. for having this platform. Without yeah. you having this platform, I would see how it goes hand in hand. The, the, the ones that out of voice, you, you, you know. So thank you, beautiful lady, that beautiful queen, for having the platform, for being led by God and doing his will to have his word and uh, the spirit just can transcend to other women. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. We're needed. Yes. All right. <laughs> thank you. Love you. <laughs>